how do you improve your photography as a beginner? When we're all starting off, we always are looking for knowledge from, you know, the internet, especially YouTube, and kind of give my perspective in terms of are these tips like legit, right? Do they work? And how can I actually add a little bit of context to these videos that you might be watching on YouTube? I'm going to start off with one of the most popular videos in the photography landscape, I'm pretty sure. Which What's up, everybody? Video here by Peter McKinnon. I've watched tons of his videos, and I think that they're they're really great. So this video is beginner the beginner photography mistakes, what to avoid to take better pictures. Let's watch. Buddy, Peter McKinnon here, and welcome back to another video. Today we're talking photography. If you like taking pictures, if you own a camera, you wander about snapping pics, this video is for you. Specifically targeted more towards beginners or people that aren't necessarily professional. But I wanted to go through a few things that beginners make mistakes on quite frequently when they're starting out in this craft. I've looked inside myself and I've found some things that I wish I had done better when I was starting photography out. A few little things that if I had just paid more attention to, I would have been taking better photos faster, which means potentially more business if that's something that you're looking to take photography towards, or just you're being a better artist, you're being a better photographer with some of these things if you keep them in mind. Keep in mind, being a better photographer doesn't entail you being better business person in terms of selling your product. That's a whole nother skill to kind of learn and, and um, perfect really. Um, that's why if you're going to start a photography business, a big thing that you need to start learning is business in general. You getting better at photography is not necessarily going to, you know, create the business that you think. Tip number one, one of the things I wish I paid more attention to is the histogram. That's this little funky chart right here that looks like, like a heart rate monitor. But the far left of that chart represents the blacks and the shadows. Far right of that graph chart represents the highlights, whites, anything that's overexposed. And in the middle is your midtones. So you never want to see that graph, if you will, the histogram spiked in one direction. If it's way up here, that means it's blown out and your image is damaged. And there's yeah, this is this is one that is actually really, really helpful. This is one that I learned um, actually in, once I was doing more video work. Um, this was something that I really kind of took uh, a little, put a little more focus into when we're kind of like when out in the field, it's sometimes difficult to see, um, you know, what things are blown out and what things are too dark. And, you know, looking at this really shows you uh, very, you know, very specifically what, what your image will look like later on. I and mean, once you understand how to approach this in your own photography, it's definitely going to save you a lot of headaches once you go back into editing your images, for sure. There's just no detail. There's too much white. There's too much brightness. There's too much light. Definitely a little intimidating, though, if you're, gonna, if you're just starting off. Um, you know, this, some might call it a little technical. But if you're going to be, you know, trying to improve your photography, you should get, you should Whereas get on the opposite right spectrum here. of that, if it's For spiking sure. on this side, there's no detail because you've crushed those blacks too much. It's just too dark. There's too much shadow. It's not evenly balanced. So when you look at a histogram, it tells you right away without even having to look at the photo because don't trust your eyes and don't trust the back of an LCD screen. Too many times I would just look at the photo on my camera and be like, yeah, it looks dope. Then I would get back to start editing it. You see it on a huge monitor. It looks totally different. I would see the histogram within Lightroom or Photoshop, wherever I was editing, and then realize, oh, wow, that's actually wildly overexposed. Had I just taken five seconds to look at the histogram, I would have known that scientifically, and then I could have just taken another photo and fixed that. Because what you're looking for is an even plane. You want that histogram to have a nice, even flow. Nope. Yeah, I mean, essentially what you're looking at is a, a, a representation of information of what the image will come back to you as right so um essentially if you are you know if your hysterium looks like from one side to the other like it's actually telling you you have way too much information here and not enough information on this side so when you're trying to like edit the images you're gonna be like oh well you know most of my image is on the really bright side and i don't have a lot of detail on the darkness so later on when you're trying to edit the darker parts of the image are not going to have that amount, that level of detail that you probably hope. And you're going to start, you know, seeing the picture look a little funky, a little grainy. Um, 
and that's how I rep- and that's how it'll it'll um show up in your images will be you'll start seeing a little more grain and a little less detail or it just kind of blocks a color which essentially you don't really want no crazy spikes like when you're tracking your sleep with a sleep tracker app and you wake up and it looks like Everest you're like wow that was a rough night but then you wake up one morning and you see it's like calm waters you're just chilling in the Maldives. It's just like, it's just smooth. You're coasting and you're like, wow, I feel great. That's the same kind of thing you want when you're looking at a history. Yeah, you also want to, you know, you also want to be like, okay, I have a, a certain style that I, I usually shoot brighter. I usually shoot like a little darker, right? And then, um, and that would be something that you think of when you're looking at that. You're like, why would I, you know, lay it, ha- take a photograph with the histogram kind of like flat? It, it might look a little, the image might might look flat, however, or like not to your style. However, it's going to look much better. And you're going to be able to like edit the image a lot better once you get it into the editing phase. Um, so kind of like the, the idea of having the histogram be kind of in the middle is just a way for you to have more information later on for you to edit the images to your style right so don't 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 i mean you can style your images before um at like in camera however sometimes you know you don't know exactly what that looks like like he mentions and just having the flexibility to be able to um edit to your style might be a little more beneficial and it might create um you know more it, it, you'll have more images that you can be able to do that with if you kind of edit, if you actually take images with the histogram a little bit more flat um, and to edit to your style like that. Instagram. Too. I have weird analogies, but I think you guys dig them because they help me. Tip number one to help you being a better photographer, look at that histogram. Don't trust your eyes in the back of the LCD. Point number two is settling for a photo when you could have made it so much better by either moving yourself to a better vantage point or moving something in that frame out of the way, right? So as an example, you're taking a photo shoot, someone's standing there, you snap a photo. You could have just moved that chair like two inches to the left. It would no longer be in frame and it would make that photo way better because the focus is now on the subject or maybe it's just move. Yeah, this is something that, you know, as you learn to look at things in a certain way, you're definitely going to be catching these things more often. One of the things that actually helps a lot in terms of movement and having yourself move instead of zooming in or just settling for the shot, which is what he's talking about, is using a prime lens. Um, Usually using a, a prime lens kind of forces your body to move instead of having, you know, to zoom in, um, or use that as a crutch, right? So having a prime lens is actually a really, really great thing to have as a beginner, just because it will it will kind of force you to move a certain way. And the, and once you start moving for the shot that you want, your shots are just going to be much, much better. You're going to start looking, you're going to start seeing, like he mentions, the chair, the person at the edge of the, of the frame, right, that you probably don't want. And it'll, it'll, create it'll add another layer of dimension to how you perceive and how you um take in the environment that you're trying to take a picture of moving your subject a little bit to the left so that garbage can isn't in frame anymore you don't have to worry about photoshopping it or maybe it's walking up the hill or down the hill to get a better vantage point or trying a few extra locations instead of just being okay with the one that you have so sometimes it's these little tweaks by just moving something out of the way or moving yourself that's going to make a massive difference with how good your photos look when you'd be surprised go take some shots don't think anything of it then also, just knowing what your subject is, is going to be <laughs> just knowing that every almost every time you take a picture, you want to have a subject like either it's a beam of light, whether it's an animal, whether it's a flower, whether it's a mountain, understanding and just having a clear understanding of what your subject is in the photograph will actually make you look at those little details like the chair and you would be like why is that there if my if my subject is x right um so having a very clear understanding what your what a what your subject is in the image which is actually it's actually a very it's a lesson that took me a little bit of time to understand or to kind of you know get to was like every image 
needs a subject. Like as a beginning photographer, a lot of the time you go through a phase at the very beginning where you're photographing most, I feel like just to, to take pictures and that's amazing. That's great. However, you know, when you want to get to a point where you have a subject that 10 X's the photographs that you take. And once you know that all these things about like moving stuff and move and like creating different angles, it's going to click a little more because you are focused on a subject, which is a whole nother. I feel like that's a whole nother lesson in terms of beginner photographer is just knowing your subject. And look at them, look inside the frame and think to yourself, what could I have moved out of the way to make this picture more clear, more concise, more focused, more polished, more professional? I guarantee you'll almost always. I mean, last resort, you just Photoshop it out, right? However, is that is, is that the best is that, is that the best thing to do? I, no, you know they always have Photoshop is great, but you really want to avoid trying to do that it, on on you know on the field. You want to definitely try to avoid that. Always find something. Maybe it's even just your sunglasses that you left on the couch and you're taking a picture of this nice clean room, but you forgot when you walked in, you dropped your keys on the counter. It would look better if those keys were gone. So it's those little things that you need to look for. That you can easily remove. They're going to make your photos look better or move yourself to get a better vantage point. That's number two. Oh, I'm feeling this. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna come. I'm gonna come close for this one. I'm gonna. I'm, I'm even gonna drop down my right. voice so that you even feel like, oh, something's about to happen. He's All about right. to drop some knowledge. What's... I hate, hate Ooh. tripods. Ugh. <laughs> oh, actually, the worst. No tripods? Way. No yeah. thanks. Even buying a tripod is like just the worst thing to have to. Yeah, it's 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 a real mood killer. Um, at the very beginning, you definitely are like, okay. A tripod dude like what am i supposed to be like fixed on a spot and take my time to take a picture like it's it, it's one of those things that you kind of grow into in into loving it's like a fine wine you know what i mean once you discover what a tripod can do for you and the range of photos that you can take because you have that piece of equipment it's you I, I haven't gone back. Like, I'm sorry. I'm bringing my tripod everywhere I go. Like, it doesn't matter how expensive it is. It doesn't matter. As long as it holds your camera steady and solid, it's solid to the ground, that's all you need. Like, this is a great, this is a great tip. Dubai. Right here. You walk in, you're not even excited. You're like, I guess I, I guess I should go get one. Monopods, I like them a little bit more because they have a better function for video for me. But tripods, I just... Yeah, monopods are okay. Um... Still, it still creates a, it creates a, it creates stability for sure. Um, but if you're really trying to like, you know, do like waterfalls, trying to do parts, uh, photograph where you're capturing movement, especially landscapes and outside where, you know, stuff like that. Having that tripod is a lifesaver for sure. Just, ah, I can't get on board, but I wish, I wish that I got on board with tripods earlier because the amount of shots that I could have got with a tripod, just bringing it with me Fast. for long exposures or yeah. to just have more clear in focus images yep. would have made all the difference. Because sometimes even... Yeah, focus. That's that's a big part of what how it improves as well. It's just like, it, your, your subject's going to be tight it's going to be in focus it's going to be sharp your images are going to look so much better because even if you think you have a really steady hand come on like i i go through like three cups of coffee before i do anything like there's going to be some shaking in there and to kind of just rely on having your you know your body hold that hold that you know that, that position for that amount of time even if, if it, even if it's for a second like why? Why put yourself through that when you can just set it up and take your time with it? Even if you think your shutter speed's fast enough, you will get a better quality photo if you lock it off on a tripod. Not to mention all the advantages that you get being able to shoot a wide range of different types of photos because yep. you have a tripod, long exposures, making those waterfalls look better with that milky smooth water, all of those yeah. things, the star trails in the skies, cars driving by, that stuff all yep. looks better and works when you have- a Yeah, movement, that's what you capture. When that's what helps with the with the tripod is just you're capturing movement. And if that's what you want, you gotta you gotta stand still. A tripod with you. So invest in a tripod early, use it often, bring it everywhere you go. Because yeah. just put it in your car, 
buy a tiny, like a, a small tripod, you know, and just put it in your backpack or just bring it with you just in case because it'll, it'll make a it difference. It always comes down to the tripod. It always comes down. And that's why yep. I hate it. That's why I'm like, oh, you got me again, tripod. <laughs> why don't I just bring you with me everywhere? I've been doing this for 15 plus years now and I'm still trying to learn that one. So my tip to you, bring a tripod with you, use it often, get to know it, get to love it. Tripods. Oh, I feel like we just had a therapy session. I just feel lighter <laughs> now. Feels great. Okay, the last tip, the last, last mistake that a lot of beginners make and that I made all the time, being thorough. So many times I would just rip through, grab my camera, shoot what I thought I needed and be done. Yeah. I didn't take the time yeah. to check all my settings enough because I just thought I knew it. I was arrogant. I just thought, I know this. Like I obviously, I nailed it. I being prepared. Simple. Sounds simple. Sounds boring. It's not very exciting. It's not a sexy subject there. However, if you are prepared for where you're going, you will have a much better time. You will, you will just, you know, you won't even think about it in a way where you're just like, okay, I'm prepared. So I know what I'm doing. And that's essentially the point that you want to get to. Yes, you want to be able to adapt as soon as possible. You want to be able to change the settings. You want to be able to like, you know, do this and that. However, you want to reduce that. You don't want to have to throw your camera onto a whole nother setting or go through the menus while you see like an eagle flying by and like it's like, you know, just skimming the top of the water and you're going like, oh, maybe I should, you know, like, come on, right? Like that's going to happen for sure, but you don't want to have that be something that you have to do. If you can plan ahead, that's so much better. Like if you are going to a certain place and you're like, okay, I'm gonna encounter X, Y, and Z, right? Uh, you know, I'm gonna go to a waterfall and, I'm, and I know that I'm gonna do some long exposures, um, you know, where, you know, I want that silky smooth water. Okay, so you wanna re set your camera so when you get there, it's already like halfway there, right? So you need to adjust the, just a little bit of timing in terms of like how long is this exposure, right? So just kind of having a, the foresight of what you could expect at the location is going to make your photography so much better because at that point, you're not – the bandwidth that you're going to have is going to go towards creating a more dynamic image instead of trying to – grab the image period right so you know once you're taking a picture there's only so much bandwidth only so much bandwidth that you have and if you can actually allocate that for creativity for uh creating a more exciting image then that's going to be so much better than putting that bandwidth in terms of like oh it's dark i need to actually make sure that this picture shows up clearly right and then you're not playing with everything else so being prepared in like Force like having the foresight of knowing like this this might be something that I encounter. This is I'm gonna set this cam. I, this is how I'm gonna set my camera up. Perfect. If you have a different camera, if, if you have like a if you're like this might not be like the beginner thing, but like if you have two cameras on you, right? Like have one set up for for things that you just spontane spontaneous are gonna be, like see something shows up like oh there's a deer boom right you have that you have that camera ready to go. Or something like that if you have you know and you have a different one for a different thing that you might uh look for so even just having like the extra little extra camera um and having that foresight is is really really gonna is i really got helpful. it in camera i was on them like I, I do the same thing i do all the time i'm good but i've made this mistake so many times maybe you shot jpeg instead of raw maybe you shot small jpeg instead of raw and a little fun fact i'm gonna come clean about something last year i went to the ice caves took these amazing star trail photos. Something happened midday. I actually shot all of those photos on small JPEG, not even raw. I was still able to blow them up for my gap. And also once you get there, like just look at your settings. Also when, you know, don't just like take out your camera and, and like assume that the settings on your camera are what you think they're gonna be when you get there. Cause sometimes it happens to me. Sometimes the settings just literally change like I changed the battery out or something like that. And the, all the settings are different. Like I'm really bad at kind of like 
set uh, kind of setting the camera like that. But sometimes I change the battery and like the settings just change, right? Um, so making sure that you have the settings that you want on the camera be, well, before you use it is also really smart. It's a smart, it's a smart thing to do. To Allery, but inside knowing that like the highest res I have of those photos is like 1200 pixels wide, that hurts. Yeah, I mean, this guy probably shoots raw every time. But like that one time, the camera just like tweaked out or something and it went back to JPEG. Like sometimes you don't, I mean, it's technology, right? It's, it's going to go crazy at some point. So you got to just double check. Especially being that like there's some of my favorite photographs that I've ever taken because I was rushing through it. I just assumed I'm not going to make those mistakes, but I'm still making them. So being thorough to check your settings to make sure the smallest thing isn't going to ruin something incredible is very and you got to know your camera as well. Like as a beginning photographer, you might not know or, you know, you might not be as familiar with all the settings. And that's that's completely fine. And I think that's, you know, that's something that comes with time and practice. So, you know, if you get a new camera, if you're new, if you get a new camera or something like that, just being familiar with the menus and, you know, being able to change certain things is going to be... It, it's very important. Matter. Maybe it's making sure your ISO is not too high. Your shutter speed's right on. Checking that EV meter to make sure it's not all the way to the left. You're not yeah, that happens a lot. Like sometimes you're you're playing with it, especially with the cameras. Like I I use the Sony uh, A series, and they all have like the little wheels on like the thumb area, and you know, all of them. Sometimes you can just just you just move it, and then you you'll be like, oh. I was like at plus three this entire time, just shooting plus three for like half an hour. And that's why I was taking all these pictures at these like crazy settings. And I forgot to put it back to zero. Like, you know, just dumb stuff like that. You're not overexposed or underexposed. It's in the middle. So being thorough and checking all those things makes all the difference. Beginner or pro, we still make those mistakes, but getting it early on is going to help you out. That's my advice. You want to take better photos? I think those things will help you. I don't think those things are the sole ingredient to like, you watch this video, you're a better photographer instantly. It's all with time, right? It all takes time over time, building up different things. But yeah, I do yeah. think this will help you think about some things differently that might save one or two small little instances as you're shooting. That's generally going to make you better at this art form. So that's all I have for you today. Hit that like button if you like this video. Smash it. Got a little carried away on that one. All right. Yeah. Th these are amazing tips. These are great. You know, these are actually easy ones to remember um, and they don't kind of overlap. And, you know, one of the things that you also kind of want to take a look at is like when you look at videos like this, try to get at least one next time you go out. Right. There's a lot. I mean, there's a, you know, even with three tips, like if you get three ideas that you're trying to how to improve, like that's that could be substantial like just three different ways and if you can get one of those one or two of those just like nailed on your next like visit to whatever and you're taking images like like those three are really really good um this is a great video um if you still haven't seen this video go over there hit the like button on that one and um, i appreciate you guys for watching this i hope um you know you got a little bit more information in terms of like beginner photography and how you can like improve and you know i hope my commentary here gave, uh, gave you a little bit of um, more information and all that kind of stuff and here's another video that you might like if you like the commentary on these videos and giving a little more insight um, on these tips and tricks for beginner photographers uh make sure you subscribe hit the like button and i'll see you guys next time